Welcome everybody, I'm Laura Shu, author of the Lightroom blog at laurashu.com. In this video I'm going to talk about importing photographs into the Lightroom catalog. Now remember from my introduction to Lightroom video that importing photos into the catalog does not mean physically moving my photographs into Lightroom. Lightroom never owns the photos. They sit out on your hard drive however you choose to organize them and Lightroom establishes a connection to them or a catalog entry for them. Now before we get started on importing, if you're opening up Lightroom for the first time, it opens up with this guided tour which just orients you to the program. If you want to watch the tour you can read the information and click Next, otherwise you can click the X here to close it out. And you'll see one of these in each of Lightroom's modules. If you want to watch it later you can go up to Help Library Module Tips to start it again. Now you're going to face two import scenarios. First, importing all of the photographs that are already on your hard drive but are not yet in Lightroom. Second, importing new memory cards of photos. So we'll deal with the first one first. To access the import dialog, we'll click on import down here in the bottom left. Now on the left hand side here is where we tell Lightroom where the photos are that we want to import. Right now it has a memory card selected here that I happen to have plugged in. Those are not the photos that I want to import at this point. I want to import some photos that are sitting on my internal hard drive, my C drive or my Mac hard drive. So I'm going to click on this sideways triangle to expand that out and then I'm going to go into whatever folder my photos are in. In my case I want to get to my pictures folder. It's in my users folder and then in my Laura folder. There's actually a shortcut to pictures though if you don't remember that and that's to click on this big gray box here and choose the shortcut My Pictures. So there's just a couple handy shortcuts in here. So I can click on My Pictures, Lightroom just jumps me to My Pictures folder within my Laura folder within Users on my internal hard drive. Now occasionally you won't see the folders that you need. For example on my internal hard drive here I'm seeing my users folder but nothing else. To see everything else on this drive what I would need to do is collapse users by clicking on the downward triangle. Now I see not only users but every other folder on this hard drive. But of course in fact for my example I do want to be in my pictures so I'll go back into my Laura folder and then I'll come down into my pictures folder. I'll expand that and we can see what's in my pictures. Now I have a stuff folder here which is what I want to import. This is all of my photos from before I started using Lightroom that I want to get into Lightroom. So I have a Seattle Snow folder here. If I click on it I'll see the photographs here. I can scroll down the, with the right hand scroll bar here to see them all. I can increase the thumbnail size. You should have a thumbnail size slider in your toolbar here. My video capture is not high enough resolution for you to see it. You can also use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard to increase or decrease thumbnail size. Now if there are some photos here that I don't want to import, I can uncheck them. If I want to see them bigger before I make a decision, I can double click on one or I can hit this loop view icon here to move to seeing one photo at a time. I can make a decision by unchecking this include on import. I could zoom in by clicking in the photo, zoom out again by clicking back on the photo. Then I could go to the next photo with the right arrow key. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to grid view and just say that I almost never make decisions on which photos to keep here in the import dialog. I prefer to stay in grid view or thumbnail view just like this and import all of the photos and then in the library module make the decisions on which to keep and which not to keep. There's a lot more functionality there for making those decisions. So I would go ahead and import this entire folder of photos. Notice that in my stuff folder here I've got many subfolders. I've got Seattle Snow, I've got some letters folders, I've got a Smith Family folder. I could go ahead and import those one folder at a time. When I first started using Lightroom I did just that until I got comfortable with the program. But then I said the heck with it, I just want to get all my photos into Lightroom. So the alternative is to click on the higher level folder that contains all of the subfolders you want to import. And then in the top left side here 
click on include subfolders so that not only the stuff folder but all of its subfolders will get imported. Now that I've clicked on that, you can see that I have more of a jumble of photographs here. So I've told Lightroom where the photos are that I want to import. Next, I'm going to tell Lightroom up here in the top center not to copy them. They're already on my hard drive. I'm happy with where they are. And if I'm not happy with where they are, I can move them from within the library module. I just want Lightroom to add them to the Lightroom catalog. Photos that are already on your hard drive, add is going to be the choice up here. I'm going to add them to my catalog. And then I'm going to specify some additional information here on the right hand side. Now for rendering previews, you may remember in the introduction to Lightroom video that I said that Lightroom makes three JPEG copies of your photo just to use for convenience. It's got a little thumbnail size, a screen size, and then a full size JPEG copy. You never realize that they're copies as you're working in Lightroom, but Lightroom needs them behind the scenes. Here in the import dialog, you're just telling Lightroom which of those three to go ahead and build during the import process. It's not a mission critical decision. It's really about do you wait during the import process or do you wait later? If, for example, you don't build the one-to-one -one preview during import, when you go to zoom in on a photo in the library module, you're going to see it say loading as it builds that preview. So you would choose to wait later whether, rather than during the import process. So I'm going to click on the drop down here. Minimal would mean the thumbnail only. Standard would mean the thumbnail and the screen size. And one to one would mean go ahead and build all three. I don't mind waiting. I'm going to go ahead and compromise and say standard. Embedded in Sidecar would just start out with the JPEG that your camera creates. When you look at your photo on the back of your camera LCD screen, you can see it because your camera has created a little JPEG. I wouldn't recommend that option. So I'm going to go with standard and compromise here. Now smart previews are new in Lightroom 5 and I have a whole separate video on them. But in a nutshell, they live with your Lightroom catalog and allow you to work with your photos, namely to develop them and to create output up to a certain size, even when the masters or originals are offline. If your photos are stored on an external hard drive and that hard drive is not plugged into your computer, as long as your catalog is on your computer, you'll be able to work with your photos if you've built smart previews before your photos were taken offline. Now it looks like Adobe is working towards using smart previews to also enable us to access our Lightroom photos from our mobile devices. Presumably, Lightroom would upload our smart previews to the cloud and our mobile devices would have access to them just as if they were our masters. You can see that you have the option here in the import dialog to create smart previews as you're importing your photos. Note that you can also create smart previews for any group of photos in the library module anytime after import. So if you're not sure if they'll be useful, you don't need to do it here in the import dialog. Now I think it's a great idea for Lightroom to make sure that I'm not importing photos that Lightroom already has in its catalog. So I almost always have this checked. The only exception would be if my hard drive is a complete mess and I've got many duplicates and I consciously want to bring them into Lightroom so that I can see them there and clean them up, then you might uncheck that. But generally, you're going to leave this checked. In the Apply During Import section, we could choose to apply a Develop Preset. A Develop Preset is simply Save Develop Settings. I could have a preset called Punch It Up that adds 25 points of contrast and 10 points of saturation and that I could choose to apply to all of my photos as they come into Lightroom. I could always undo it later, but that might be a better starting place for my photos. So I could choose to build that in the develop module and then use it here in the import dialog. But certainly in this scenario where I'm importing everything on my hard drive as I'm getting started in Lightroom, I'm not going to apply a develop preset. I am going to create and use a copyright and contact information preset here. So I'm going to click on none. I'm going to say new. Now this copyright and contact information that we're adding to our photos will not show on the photos themselves. It will just tag along in the data that goes with the photos so that as we export copies to share with people, 
it's clear to them that we own the copyright and they have a way to get in touch with us if they wish to use it. So up here in the top, I'm going to go ahead and give this a preset name, LS2012 Copyright. And down here in the Copyright section, I'm going to put the copyright symbol, which on a Mac would be Option G. On a PC, if you have a numeric keypad to the right of your letter keys, you'll hold the Alt key down and do 0169 and then let go and you'll have the copyright symbol. If you don't have a numeric keypad and you have a PC, you can go out to the web and copy and paste the symbol, or you could just do left parentheses, C, right parentheses. Not the end of the world. So I'm going to go ahead and say 2012 Laura Shu, and I'll change the copyright status to copyrighted here. I like to put all rights reserved. Now the copyright info URL would be used if you have a special place on your website where you list rights usage terms for your clients, for example, you would refer them to that link with this field. Most of us are not going to have that. In the creator field, I'm going to go ahead and put Laura Shu again. And then I'm going to put enough contact information that people could get a hold of me if they came across my photo. So how much you put here is completely up to you. I'm just going to put my website in here. And that's all we need to enter. I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And now this preset is going to appear in the drop-down for me to use on every import that I do. Now the keyword box is to enter keywords or terms we want to be able to search for photos based on that apply to every single photo that we're importing. Well, I'm importing such a jumble of photos at this point that there aren't any keywords that apply to all of them. There are keywords that apply to subsets. I'll add those keywords to those subsets in the library module when I'm done with the import. So we're working with photos that are already on our hard drive. We've set on the left-hand side where they're coming from, that we're adding the photos to the Lightroom catalog without copying them or moving them, and we're going to apply our copyright and contact information preset. Now we're going to go ahead and click on Import, and we'll see the status bar up here showing that Lightroom is importing the photos. Now the first time I import photos that have GPS latitude and longitude on them, Lightroom gives me this dialog to ask me if I want to enable reverse geocoding. I happen to have some iPhone photos in this import that have latitude and longitude assigned. If you have photos that have latitude and longitude assigned and you enable reverse geocoding, Lightroom will send the latitude and longitude information from your photos up to Google Maps, and Google Maps will send back location information, what country, state, city, etc., that location is associated with. That can be an excellent way to get location assigned to your photos. I really like reverse geocoding, and I'll show that to you when we get to the map module. But some people don't want Lightroom sending any information about their photos out to the web. So if that's you, you'll want to disable this. Lightroom's not sending anything other than GPS coordinates, but I understand the sensitivity. I'm going to go ahead and enable it, though, so that I can have that functionality. So now Lightroom has imported 129 photos and is now rendering those standard previews or JPEG copies. So when it's rendering previews, we can go ahead and start working. In the catalog section, I've got a summary of everything in my catalog at this point. 129 photos. Of course, they were the same 129 photos that were just imported. Now the folders panel shows me the exact same 129 photos, but based on where they live on my hard drive. So they live in the stuff folder. Now some people see the 129 in the folders panel and the 129 in the catalog panel and they conclude that they have 258 in total and that they have duplicates. That's not the case. Both panels show you the same photos just in a different way. The catalog panel is just a summary and the folders panel shows you the photos based on where they are on your hard drive. So I could click, for example, on the Seattle Snow folder and just see photos from that folder. Now Lightroom is not giving me quite enough information here. I know that this stuff folder is within my pictures folder, but Lightroom isn't telling me that. So what I'm going to do is right click on the stuff folder and say show parent folder. 
Now it shows me that indeed it does live in my pictures folder. Now I understand where my photos are. It's not a mystery to me. If I want to, I could right click on pictures and say show, and show parent folder and it would show me that pictures lives within Laura and then I could right click on Laura and it would show me that Laura lives within users. I don't really need that level of information. As, as long as I can see my master pictures or photo library folder, I feel like I'm in great shape. The next video in this series covers how to import new photo shoots from memory cards or from your camera. If you've enjoyed this video, do click here to check out the full series, Lightroom 5, The Fundamentals and Beyond. It's 12 and a half hours of top quality training for beginners and experienced users and will help you to become confident in Lightroom and take your photos to the next level. Also check out my blog for lots of free tutorials and tips. I'm Laura Shue.